Hello, y'all time for another dragon making. So, what we've got today is basically the twin of Charlemagne and Cleopatra here. Hmm. Yeah, a friend asked for it and, uh, you know, it, it meant a lot to me because they, like, were wanting to buy Charlemagne and Cleopatra off me and it's like, I'm really sorry, that's my personal dragon. And she's, like, blind, so she was just feeling it. Oh, I hope she gets her surgery. But, uh, basically, like, I showed her a few of my dragons. Your shade. And, uh... <laughs> They're both black dragons. It's kind of a rare color, actually. It's more difficult to make a black dragon than a silver dragon, so I don't make quite as many of them. But this one's gonna be black, and actually so is the next one. <laughs> Anywho, so uh, she was saying that, uh, you know, she couldn't really feel the shape of the uh, single-headed dragon all that well, but could could really feel the shape of the two-headed dragon like that. That really meant a lot to her there, and she liked the forked tail as well. So we're basically gonna be making her, her again, him again, them again. She already picked out a name, too. Ooh, not sure we're going to spoil that or not. I'll spoil it later on my next one. I'll talk about it. Special. And we need some rings. So, uh, right before I started, uh, can I call this a stream? I'm going to call it a stream anyway, because it's going to be eventually. So before I started the stream, I uh, realized I didn't have enough uh, 3 inch black rings here. So I was like, well, let's just go uh, grab another bag of them. And then I was all set up in front of the computer and everything. And I didn't have the bag open yet, so I'm like, eh, let's throw this into the video. <laughs> so, we got to open up all these rings here. Oh, goodness. We start with quarter-inch rings. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so we'll just sweep those to the side, because we're going to need three sixteenths inch rings. And... Okay, so we grab a pile of quarter inch. Ooh, nice catch. And uh, this is going to be the... Oh, the color of the dragon. So we're going to be making this one green. Uh, CNC here is uh, red, and the other one is... Uh, like, the names are kind of based off of a really kind of countryfied, you know, hillbilly thing. And uh, the two names are going to be the same. I'll spill that much. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, something and something. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I thought... Uh, you know, green. It's pretty country. It's pretty forest. It's pretty hillbilly. I'm pretty hillbilly. Prairie billy? <laughs> it rolls off the tongue nice. Prairie billy. <laughs> no, I'm not so much a hillbilly. There wasn't many hills out there. I'm a prairie billy. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna have to run with that. Oh, what I came up... well, not came up with, but remembered a really, really good, uh, you know, expletive to uh, shout out. Horse feathers! I completely forgot about horse feathers. I need to start using that more often. <laughs> oh, horse feathers. <laughs> hmm, ponderings. Ooh, pre-closed. There's a really toxic person that I got out of my uh, life recently, but uh, they did at least teach me one really good life lesson, and that's never admit your mistakes. You know, unless, you know, the situation requires for it, like say you're at work, and then that's just called, not culpability, there's a better term for that one there, uh, um, you know, I and mean, you own up to your mistakes, like say you forgot to make a bet or something like that. Like uh, being the one to own up and say, sorry, sorry, my bad, I forgot to make the bed, it's in a rush. You know, that thing. It starts with a C, I can't remember the word. It'll come to me. Learned it in college. Anyways, they basically said that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
song that one's got kick mm. not sure if I have that one inside of my discography or not should be there it's probably my favorite one to sing actually pretty sure I have it there it's inside of my song of the days damn you divine feminine she made me kind of admit a weakness and threw me off. Hmm, go away you. That wasn't me doing. <laughs> She's kind of tricking me just a little bit, like, uh, you know, testing me. Like she said, uh, you know, basically say something silly like that. Then gave me kind of a uh, angryish face or something like that, or trickster kind of eyes. And I was like, ah, I fell for it. So that's good practice, good practice. Asshole thing, but good practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deities. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, scale, scale, to the dragon, make a picnic. I'm not even counting the scales now. Let's see, five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right. I guess I could just leave the bag out, but I like to have the right amount out if I can. It's just, it's my way. <laughs> Now this is going to be a double toothed dragon, because I want the two heads to be identical. Like uh, with C and C's here, uh, the two heads are different, but uh, with this one I want them to be identical. So it's a near twin, like yeah, a twin. <laughs> but this is going to be double toothed, because that's basically just easier to make with, uh, what should we call it, uh, black dragons. Uh, they don't have 732 inch rings in silver, or in black. So uh, yeah, to make a toothed head, I uh, use quarter inch rings. Which works really well because we have quarter inch rings, which is why most uh, most black dragons are uh, toothed, extra toothed. I still don't uh, haven't decided what to say about that one. When they have teeth on the side like that, is that toothed or like extra toothed? Because regular dragons have teeth too. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to say that you're not toothless is all. <laughs> toothed. I guess that just makes sense. Oh, they still have teeth. Don't worry about that. It's a dragon. They do that. And I put this scale on backwards, whoops. <laughs> I think the guy side of me is coming out today. So like, uh, as you know, I'm gender fluid. And uh, basically that means it fluctuates. And uh, so yeah, I'm feeling more guyish today. Voice sounds a little bit more guyish too. I think the guy side is a little bit more where the prairie accent comes out. Ooh, just for fun, I'm going to push the prairie accent a little bit. Every so often I'm thinking of work, maybe, just maybe I'll be able to pull out the prairie accent. Then, you know, go all heavy into it like this. See what they say, if anything. I actually say ain't every so often. 
beside me for my random you know just thoughts of hey here's a good idea because when I'm singing you know, I came up with it here but anyways just uh, gonna prattle here that myself feels like the secret will be going if I let you know <laughs> oh so random fun um, I discovered something new um, all dressed chips and banana mm. 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 seriously mm. Just try putting random things together. Like, you never know what you're gonna get. Like, there's a good chance that it's gonna be crap. Like, here you're mixing, like, ketchup. No, ketchup and sour cream, I think, is good. Like, ketchup and hot chocolate or something. I've never tried that mental on that one. <laughs> but, uh, so you kind of expect it to taste like crap. For the record, sour cream and hot chocolate is awful. <laughs> it's cream. <laughs> but, yeah. Every so often you come across something glorious, like all dressed chips and banana, just mmm. Or for making it like extra fatty, putting a uh, cheese whiz on, uh, what do you call it? Not pop tarts, not pizza buns, not pizza pocket, pizza pops, those things. Yeah, oh, this is gonna look pretty good. Don't know if you can see, well, try and see from the back there. It's yeah, black on green. Oh, Dad's got some potential. Sort of like bitey here, uh, bitey here, who's blue and black. Did I say that before? Anyways, you're blue instead, but mm. remind me of him. <laughs> throat singing that kind of like gums it up every so often is uh, needing to swallow like you know a little bit of saliva builds up in your throat you can kind of try and pocket it on your tongue while you're singing then like if there's a gap the song kind of quickly mm -hmm. there's usually kind of a skip there anyway like I know it's pretty rare that I'm able to actually uh, stick to the note but uh, yeah basically that's what you got to do to get rid of like saliva in the mouth otherwise you're still singing what are, what are you gonna do <laughs> You don't really breathe it. Well, okay, you breathe in, but you know that's kind of through the nose type of thing there. Mm, chips. <laughs> Stock, uh, stopping long enough to swallow though. Hmm. Like uh, the Metroid theme there, the Norfair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I can swallow between those two. That's a big enough gap. But uh. <laughs> yeah, you can see that, that uh, little skip there. <laughs> Although on that note, it can kind of make a fun little uh, bar trick type of thing. Like, because uh, it sounds like you're humming. So, humming while drinking. Ooh. <laughs> 
So kind of uh, gotten a laugh out of a few people like that. And also every so often, like if I'm, you know, in public or whatever, I'll, uh, I've seen people kind of looking at me like, you know, kind of weird, like, is that sound coming from you? So uh, then I'll uh, open my mouth and be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, if you're humming, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you can't open your mouth, because otherwise it'd be, mm -hmm, ah, 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 ah. Now, if you bump that back up and kind of put it back into the throat again, yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> Throws people off. Maybe that's why that one guy's didn't at work uh, like, laughs every so often, because, you know, I'm, when I'm singing, I'm going to smile, and it's like, <laughs> So I think that, like, throws her off and it uh, makes her laugh, like, how are you doing that? <laughs> you know, odds are the, most of the people that are listening to me probably just think that I'm humming. <laughs> I guess when you think about it, probably not many people have actually uh, heard throat singing before. Like, unless you uh, specifically go out of your way for it, or uh, rumor has it I sound like the uh, Inuit throat singers. I kind of like learned my own, own, my own type of thing, but I've been told that I'm like them. So I've got to look that up online, I haven't yet really kind of lazy on that one. <laughs> but uh, other than that, or if I could find someone in town, this is kind of a predominantly indigenous town here. So if I could meet some actual uh, Eskimos that, you know, th no throat singing, that would be absolutely fantastic. I would have mentioned that on the radio if I could. Maybe I'll try and email that uh, radio announcer guy back again and uh, let him know. Okay, so you can only play syndicated songs, so like I wasn't allowed to sing on the radio because of that. Then I'll be all like, hey, I'm trying to find, like, Inuit throat singers here. Is that, like, I don't know, derogatory to say Inuit? I'm pretty sure that's the right word. You know, kind of a weird, touchy subject, because, uh, you know, racism and all that, and... Uh, is that a good word to say? I know indigenous is a safe one. Indian's bad. I guess it depends on the context, because, you know, they use it a lot and everything. And <laughs> it's a weird subject. So, like... Okay, what's the nicest words I can use here? Politically correct. Like, ugh, I hate being politically correct. <laughs> Anyways, I want to meet some throat singers. <laughs> yeah, sorry to prattle there. Honestly, I love their culture. Like the love of plants and everything and the spirit animals. It just, oh, holy goodness. I was born into the wrong place, you know. I am all about the nature and stuff. Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> I talk to them. Mom said they're up in heaven. <laughs> in case you didn't know, my parents are passed away. Thanks, Mom. I just realized that the uh, shoulders are going to be done a little bit differently on this dragon, like as compared to a one-headed dragon. But thankfully I have CNC here to, uh, you know, look at the neck and everything. You know, I've come up with that being the best way to say the names here. Like Charlemagne and Cleopatra, those are really, really long names. You know, I kind of did that deliberately, but, you know, at the same time kicking myself because it's annoying to say. But then I'm not really all that fond of saying CNC either because it sounds like a CNC mill. You know, uh, what's that one? Computer CNC. Something numerically controlled? Computer numerically controlled? Something like that. In other case, uh, they're not a CNC machine. <laughs> it's one of those, I think, the laser cutting type of systems where you draw like a design on a computer, then a laser goes and cuts it out of steel or something like that. Like, seriously, those are amazing. I would love one of those. I'll just set up in my apartment in the corner and stuff. Ooh, and I'll make a uh, kind of uh, progress video a little bit later. I've got uh, the boxes more or less in the places that I want. I have a generic pile of stuff in the middle of the room, but all of the stuff has more or less been categorized into different boxes now of, you know, like items. Like, hey, so here's all my toiletry supplies and stuff, like the peroxide and 
like my spare contact lenses and there's a uh, like beauty mask thing there and spare Kleenexy things and you know in my place I, I don't have room for this <laughs> there is not enough shelf like cupboard space to put it so it's like all right you're going inside of this little white box thingy here now where is this little white box thingy going so I'm thinking underneath the sink inside of the bathroom because it's basically just a sink like on like four posts it's, it's hollow underneath there empty underneath there anyway yeah, you're not quite long enough yet. And yeah, I figure it's gonna go in there. I still have my little camping uh, food thingy. I guess I could put that in front of the backpacking kit and everything. That would make the most sense. Oh, hey, mental note. So my uh, camping food, like, uh, you know, the stuff that you just mix with boiling water that you take camping with you? Hiking food. Um, uh, I should put that inside of there and then put that over there. So right now all that's inside of there is like two things of uh, Mr. Noodles. And I think some dry soda crackers. <laughs> it's basically what I lived on for a while. Not what I lived on. That was my uh, treat tray. Basically, I treated uh, the unsalted cr I didn't want salted ones. Kind of watching my salt intake for a while there. And, uh, yeah, so uh, unsalted crackers was my version of chips. Like, you know, poor man's chips type of thing. And uh, Mr. Noodles was my uh, just emergency late night. Oh, I want a little bite of something. Let's be bad. Oh, let's have a Mr. Noodles. Oh, goodness, you're like 400 calories. Oh, just, oh. <laughs> they did find some nice, I want to say 200 or 250 uh, mill, uh, milliliter of my calorie ones. And that was pretty nice. Wish I could find those again. Don't have quite the selection in the paw, but you know, it's decent. They have a fair number of stores. They have an extra foods, and I haven't really been across the river where there's extra stores over there. And a red apple, I haven't seen one of those in years. You know, it's a discount bulk type of store. If they have slightly different suppliers, I guess. <laughs> you know, basically, I don't I haven't been in there in ages. Maybe it is different from a Dollarama. Maybe it'll be like a cheap Walmart or something like that. <laughs> like Zellers. <laughs> oh, goodness. The only Z the last Zellers in uh, Winnipeg disappeared a number of years back. Okay, how long are you? We have three scales left. So in theory, if we add more than one more, that'll be 18. But you, CNC. Was this the 18th scale, or was that the 19th? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That is the 18th scale, because the dragons are 18 scales long, and then there's shoulder scales coming off of that. But this doesn't have shoulder scales. He doesn't have shoulder scales. Because you know that head scales, they basically act like shoulder scales anyway, because they're coming off to the side. So, uh, I didn't want to slide, like, another scale inside of here. I guess I could have. Might look cool. Potentially do that in the future. I am not messing with you, CNC. Gotta try and kiss both heads at once. <laughs> Anywho's. I love my dragon. We have to finish this dragon. Uh, so, yeah, you're 17 long, right? Let's double check. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so yeah, we want it like this because we want to make it the uh, duplicate of this one essentially. I'm gonna try and copy the head as best I can. Like, I have kind of a pretty convolute, I want to say. It makes sense when you look at it, the like weave pattern that makes up the combining two alien male weaves with uh, interwoven foreign one. So we're going to try and duplicate, as, duplicate that as best possible and see what happens. Don't have much faith in uh, duplicating it. <laughs> you know, you muck about with something more or less at random for an hour or two. It's like, okay, am I actually going to duplicate that? Or am I going to muck about with it for an hour or two until I get a symmetrical shape? Mmm. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> with the highest pitch that I can do right now. Kinda. 
Also, this ring is being very di and broke. Speaking of mucking about, yeah, with the uh, black and steel, like the uh, heating process, I guess that goes through, uh, like to change their color, um, that warps the ring, and so the ends don't quite match up like as perfectly as the silver ones. So I kind of got to try and raise one side while forcing the other side down. And yeah, then you get a nice smooth edge. Generally with the silver rings too, I like to run my finger over the uh, seam because some of those are a little bit warped too. And uh, yeah, that basically ensures that they're nice and round. Takes slightly longer, but you know, your quality and stuff. And also I'm going to be swapping to uh, saw cut rings in the future. Um, I don't think they have saw cut uh, black and steel, unfortunately. I'll double check that. But uh, yeah, basically it'll make for kind of uh, cleaner seams. I've kind of uh, debated whether to get that or not. There's a fairly strong, like, price difference between the two. Hmm. In all honesty, I'd have to raise the price of my dragons to take into account the saw cut. <sighs> That's problematic. I'm already basically losing money on them. Or at least working below minimum wage to make them. <sighs> yeah, I make them for fun. If I made them for a living, I'd probably have to sell them for like $80, $90 a piece and basically crank out like three or, well, two or so dragons a day. Like say I make a dragon in four hours if I get like a good solid run down. Do that, take the promo photo, make an adoption scroll, and then make another one like in the same day and basically do that every single day. I get the feeling that that's probably what would be necessary for me to make a living off of the dragons alone, which is really why I want to do the live stream again and uh... Yeah, get that going, get my Patreon going, have giveaways, all that type of fun stuff. And Twitch rewards and emojis and st emoticons? Emoji? I think emoji. <laughs> yeah, get back into that again. Can't live stream from here again. Internet's too slow. Can take me like three days to upload this video. <laughs> so what I figure is, uh, since I lost so much of my art in the past, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a dragon video, which will be, you know, like, you know, three hours, four hours all told. Don't know if I'm going to try and do a single dragon in a single video every time. This one, the heads are going to take twice as long, so this could end up pushing me to, like, midnight or something, so we'll see. I don't work tomorrow morning, so that's a distinct possibility. Chain mailing for, like, six hours straight, though? Eh, we'll see. I do have fairly strong hands. Normally don't like to push them just for the sake of, you know, long term. Okay, if I stress them for like eight hours of straight squeezing steel every day. Like, okay, what's that going to do in like 20 years? <laughs> so yeah, I think I don't really mind like working under minimum wage for them because I can't really make a living off of the dragons themselves. If I'm going to be making a living, it's probably going to be from the uh, Twitch live stream and, uh, you know, the bonuses on there and stuff. And probably YouTube as well. I'm uh, doing my Song a Day series on YouTube. I'm up to 323 songs, uh, 323 days without skipping a song. Some makeup days. Some days when the internet was down. <laughs> All there. All of them are there. Including one that I thought I'd lost. So we actually have an extra song right now. Uh, song number 145 ended up being replaced because I thought it was like you know, corrupt or, or missing in some manner or another. Or miscounted. I thought it was a miscount. This was, this was a while ago. And yeah, so the song was discovered and it's, uh, there's been a few kind of number mix-ups uh, over time in general. Like, you know, you don't have the internet for three days or whatever and then you got this kind of jumble of videos in your camera. Maybe you were lazy one day and uh, didn't like delete the uh, outtakes. So it's like, okay, we've got like seven videos here. You know, it's a pretty safe bet it's going to be the last recording, but I'd like to double check. Because, you know, maybe I kept the second last recording. Usually at that point, if I'm kind of pondering whether to go back or not, I'll, uh, what should I call it? Like, delete all the first videos and then just keep the last few. Pretty rare that I go that far. I'm usually more of a one-take pony type of thing. <laughs> first take is the best. Second take, eh. Third take, okay, I'm clearly getting bored with the situation. <laughs> All my best ideas seem to come off the first hop anyway. So generally speaking, I go with the first hop. <laughs> Makes things happen fast. 
suck up the uh, money loss of using uh, saw cut rings instead of uh, machine cut. You know, the visual difference uh, is kind of, you know, if you're looking at it really close up, like jewelry, or jewelry around the neck or something like that, then a really, really nice, uh, basically invisible seam would be, you know, perfect. These are dragons. They're kind of more play toy and, uh, you know, scruff them around on the ground and stuff and, you know, play with them and everything. So it kind of gives them a little bit more of a rougher feel. Hmm. I could try getting saw cut rings and just make a single completely saw cut ring dragon and see how that goes. So we may do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, what do you think of my scrubs? Hmm. So I wore my uh, work clothes today. I love scrubs, honestly. Seriously, like, uh, you know, the crazy funky print type of would basically be tablecloths, like just the crazy prints and stuff like that. Like, here, this is just a pile of, like, butterflies. You can get ones with cartoon characters on them, like, just crazy, funky, awesome, hilarious patterns. Pinky in the Brain, like, Eeyore, Winnie the Pooh, um, Tinkerbell, anything like that. You can wear all of those patterns. It's like, I have so much freedom, I can basically be a walking awesome. <laughs> Doesn't need to be business casual or, you know, no logos showing or anything. You know, Eeyore, does he count as a, uh copyright or something like that. In either case, there's stuff like that. I'm sure Disney puts out scrubs too. Let's be honest, it's a pretty big industry. Like healthcare, that's a pretty big industry. When you think about it, hospitals, but uh, like all of the patients staying there. Okay, now you're going to have like all of the janitors and stuff that are cleaning out all of the trashes that are being filled up with people's briefs and like tissues and uh, things like that. And then all of the people in the hospital and all of the patients need to eat. So you're going to have a massive cooking section. You know, generally speaking, everyone there is wearing scrubs, from what I've seen. An apron over it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then there's all of us health aides that are taking care of all the patients. And in all of the, like, old folks' homes or, like, personal care homes, uh, all of the people living there and then taking care of them. And, you know, home care. Well, I guess in home care, it depends on the person. I always wear scrubs in home care. More professional, you know. I do keep my uh, college scrubs still, even with the uh, Herzing logo on the side, because awesome. Uh, maybe I should make another visit to Herzing when I uh, visit there again. Hopefully their display cabinet for like things for sale got refilled and I can you know, buy a t-shirt or something, because uh, when I went to college they were, there, they were like out of half of the colors and uh, weren't able to order more for whatever reason. Kind of makes me think, oh Herzing, I hope you're not having like financial problems and stuff. like. This is swag, sellable swag. This is how you make money for the school. How is this not ordered yet? <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll try to uh, make a swing back there at some point in the future. And uh, yeah, see if they got any swag there. Like a book bag or something like that. Like I do have my nice uh, pink book, book bag. It's in my room. What I want a book bag? Maybe a thermos. My scrubs are pretty awesome. Don't really wear them outside of work though, so... Hmm. Even a patch that I could put on my, like, purse or something like that. Well, this poor purse is kind of in scraggly shape. If I can find another really nice kind of canvas material purse, pink, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, I think I'll uh, put patches on it and be one of those chicks that has, like, you know, a dozen patches on their purse. Canvas style. I have seen purses that are made out of, uh, whatchamacallit, seatbelt material, like the strapping for a seatbelt. And basically they're kind of like band of it woven together and you have different colors and everything. Really amazing looking stuff. I know that specific pattern of material, like the texture and everything, wasn't really my style unfortunately. Otherwise I would have jumped on it in a heartbeat because you are not going to get a stronger purse. <laughs> that will last ages. Almost should have gotten one anyway. You know, my kind of tastes have changed after transitioning and stuff. So yeah, had I uh, been like known then, what I am now, I would have jumped on the multicolored one. And that would have been like my, my permanent purse for stuff. So yeah, I've got to keep an eye out for that. High quality, so I'd want to go to craft fairs and get another like handmade book bag. Like uh, check out its quality, its seam work, uh, how many like 
bands of sewing did they do over top of the like main seams and stuff. And yeah, basically check the quality. And if it's good quality, then it's like, well, let's get it. 60 bucks? Sure! I'm sure you put like a dozen hours into that thing. Or, you know, at least several. Like each dragon, the last one that I made was three hours surprisingly like crazy low for a dragon start to finish. Uh, it used to be about four hours plus an hour for adoption scroll, which uh, lately has unfortunately been taking longer. Um, uh, for a lot of it, I'm just kind of hung up on, well, A, time, and uh, B, like, what can I take a photo of you against? Like, the Dragon of Speed. Okay, what do I have that says speed? What can I, like, take a photo of you on? Because I essentially have the belongings in my apartment. I could go outside, but it's essentially, okay, Dragon of, like, Snow, Slush, like, Concrete, well... Okay, I have taken a, I have taken a lot of them outside in the city, but I'm not too familiar with the paw yet, and everything is covered with dirty slush right now because it's melty season. So, yeah, I can't really take a photo outside all that well. If I hoofed, uh, hoofed it over to the forest, I probably could, and in all likelihood will, probably in the relatively near future. Hmm, definitely in the near future. My next uh, seven-day gap, like uh, I kind of, I'm kind of on a schedule that has a nice eight-day gap. Um, I can uh, do some whittling inside of there. Because uh, to make a hiking step, it usually takes about 12, ho 12 hours. Sorry, my mind is kind of in two places at once here. It usually takes about seven days. 12 hours, why in heaven's name did that pull from? In either case, I have an opportunity to uh, take a different schedule at work. Um, uh, right now I'm working a uh, point eight schedule, which is uh, 32 hours a week, like, you know, four out of five days a week. And uh, I pick up extra shifts if I want to, you know, top it up or whatever. Generally speaking, I'd love to just make art on my own. But uh, anyway, so I have the option to take a uh, full full-time position, like a 1.0. And uh, that has uh, day shifts and night shifts that are all 12-hour shifts, which isn't too bad. It more or less kills, like, the time to do anything after work, like I'm doing this after work. That would be out the window on a uh, 1.0 shift. But, uh... Where was I going there? You got extra days off because you're doing 12 hours a day. And then you can pick up more shifts on the days that you have off as well. But uh, you do have more kind of, yeah, days off in general. No specifically seven day gaps. I want to say the longest stretch is five, which probably should be enough to uh, whittle a hiking staff. I hope, I hope. I was married back then when I made that first hiking staff. Long bit sad story behind it. I won't prattle. Its name was Cabberthunk. <laughs> like my old username. I basically abandoned that name. Not many people knew it anyway. The local geo uh, geocaching community knew it. A handful of people online because of my like ridiculously long uh, log posts. But I've uh, renamed that to uh, Dragon Mother K at the moment. And uh, yeah, I could prattle. Long sad story. Anyway, the staff's gone. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I need even more open rings. <laughs> I know these pre-closed rings that I accidentally did at the start. Uh, they're like Arna. Oh no! Wait, wait, wait! We do have uh, pre-closed uh, quarter-inch rings down the road because this is a black dragon or a toothed dragon. Because toothed dragons have quarter-inch rings for their head. Quarter? Oh no, okay, okay, good, 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 good. I thought I'd grab the 732 inch rings for a second. Yeah, no, it doesn't exist. <laughs> and, uh, like, I was like, oh no, wait, I'm grabbing from this, uh, pocket here. Shoot, that is exactly, oh no, wait, 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 it's the silver rings for those are 732. And in the, uh, blackened rings, those are quarter inch, but they're kind of, you know, in the same row. So it's like, oh, that threw me off for a second. Oh, I think I know what happened, just kind of in my absent-mindedness. I, uh, put a whole pile of pre-opened rings uh, back into the uh, bin. I'm sure if I rewound this, I'd see that. So I was like, okay, I'm done the uh, Persianing of the sides here. The rest can go away. No, no, they can't. Nija, Nijo. 
There are a handful of rings that I clip down to 732. Uh, in the middle of the tail I do that, at the very tip of the tail I do that, and sometimes the very tip of the nose. Depends on how I feel about the nose ring. If it's like too big it makes it look like they have too big of a snout, I'll trim it down. So I didn't do that with CNC. One of you I did. One of you I didn't. The toothed dragon has kind of a larger head in general. I could snip that ring down. I could. Would you like that? He was thinking about it. He was thinking about it. He says yeah. Right now? Okay, nope, nope. Keep on working on this dragon. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you, Charlemagne. Charlemagne. <laughs> For some reason, I always like to deliberately mispronounce words. I'm like Stewie or something. <laughs> Thinking child genius there. As a kid, I used to take apart toys, you know, just to like look at the gears and see how they worked and everything. My parents thought I was really gifted for that. And maybe it kind of helped with my, uh, you know, spatial awareness or kind of 3D picturing things in my head. Generally speaking, if I can picture something, I can make it. So I'm kind of wondering if it kind of trails off to that somewhere. Oh goodness, we just about forgot on the last scale, like at the bottom here. Adding that extra ring. test online at some point or another. I want to say that uh, last time I tried taking one set 120 or something like that. So I'm like, okay, well, let's try taking another one and basically just see if it's going up or down. Like, you know, check the old brain and see, see how well she's doing. <laughs> and before you go on about 120, no, impossible. The online tests are inaccurate as fuck. <laughs> but you know, you're, you're getting the same amount of inaccuracy if you go with the same one or Okay, I don't know what the same one would be, but, you know, if I get somewhere vaguely close to that again, I'll be like, okay, you are approximately the same amount in of inaccurate, I hope. <laughs> Generally speaking, I'm not stupid. <laughs> For a lot of my life, I've worried that it was, like, you know, in some way mentally challenged or something like that. Doesn't seem to have come out that way. <laughs> Hmm, I think I want to do this a slightly different way. Or do I have enough slack here? Like, you know, if you go through rings in one direction as opposed to the other, one can be like extremely hard to close the ring up and the other one is like, okay, the like tip of the ring is right out front here. Let's just do this nice and quick. Which is exactly what we want and exactly what we got. Love that sound. <laughs> mm, love you, pool. Love you too, Katie Lynn. She wanted me to say it out loud. <laughs> Let's practice a bit, shall we? What do you want to say to me, each other? You know, we kind of got to go follow along with each other. Sorry, I'm kind of changing the again. Mine's getting onto things. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite good. It doesn't really work that well right now. You know, when you try and get a conversation going back and forth, but we're having a conversation about having a conversation, so it kind of hits a loop really fast there. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, I'm doing well. Well, we are not really talking to each other. <laughs> You know, we kind of follow along with each other's thoughts, don't we? She said, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we'll practice this. Oh my goodness, I've been putting these rings in uh, incorrectly here. I am making a dragon back weave and not interwoven foreign one. Very, very close weaves. So we're going to take this out just slightly. 
by slightly, I mean completely. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, how's my deity collect? God. <laughs> <laughs> and I've kind of pondered that one too just a little bit like calling God a deity is that allowed like is that frowned upon or whatever because you know he has a deity like you know all other spirits and stuff you know generally speaking I consider it a deity if you worship it like basically talk to it on the reg <laughs> you can have friend spirits and then you can have deities so yeah he's a deity <laughs> he's cool with it Okay, now, interwoven four and one. Interwoven four and one. Here we go right now. Interwoven four and one. This is how we do. Interwoven four and four. sing at the same time. <laughs> It's their rings, so they're kind of like really blending in with each other. I really could use better lighting and soda if you're honestly. It's one of my uh, purchases down the road is, uh, you know, find some nice directional lighting like for, you know, shooting a proper film and things like that. Like that'll set me back hundreds of bucks there, that's unfortunate. I may consider uh, semi-cheaping out and basically just getting a lamp, you know, a lamp where you can uh, point the head in whatever direction. Maybe one with multiple heads on it. I've seen some photos of ones that people have kind of made themselves. Mainly to take pictures of their chain mail and stuff like that. Of which I still want to make that too. My goodness, all of these things are going to like set me back hundreds here. I'm honestly debating whether to stay here for three or four years or something. And uh, basically just, you know, hoard my money. And uh, keep on, you know, eating essentially potatoes and onions at home. <laughs> And uh, then spend all my money down to zero, more or less buying a studio. And uh, yeah, then save up after that. Because, you know, I don't have any debt right now. So what I can do is, uh, should I spend myself down to zero, and then still want to move out or opportunity moves out to uh, move out in, say, one year instead of two or something like that. And, you know, I get a job in the, like, other place. You know, opportunity comes up. Uh, then it'll be like, okay, so it'll cost me, say, $2,000 to move like say 1500 just for moving all my stuff in a truck and whatever for the like bus ticket for me and then you know again opportunity would have to come up such that it'd be worth me like either staying in a hotel or a motel or 
a hostel or something like that for a solid month until I find, you know, a place to rent. Just anyone in general to rent with, like a spare room. Honestly, I'd probably go to couch surfing. Just explain to them, hey, I got a job in your city and uh, I really want to move there and I'm going to be looking for an apartment or a, like a room to rent from someone as soon as I get there. But I need to be in town to start the job, so I need to start the job before I find the place. That's, you know, just how it worked out. So, can I stay on your uh, couch for possibly a month? Uh, all my stuff is in storage. I'm coming with a backpack full of my scrubs and uh, my work shoes. <laughs> and that's more or less it. I guess some form of food in some manner or another. I'm going to live off of just bags of apples for a month. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what I'd do for food. I'd probably just live on canned stuff and pasta like... Alright, looks like I'm eating crap for the next, uh, like, 20 days or 60 days or whatever it happens to be. And uh, even if need be, co uh, coach surf from, like, uh, one coach to another within the same city. And just get take the new bus route or something like that to wherever my work is. And in the meantime, every day after work, be all, Okay, looking for an ap apartment, call this place, asteroid management, you got any places? Or here's a co uh, rental place. Okay, we need, like, to contact your previous landlord and whatever. We need a landlord reference. It's like, all right, cool. Uh, contact this person, but now you got to get a hold of that person. Then I'm on the uh, kind of list of people that might potentially be approved for this uh, room. So we have to wait six weeks for them to basically receive all of their applications. And then if you're lucky enough to be the one that's chosen for that uh, apartment, then you can move in. But in the meantime, you've got those six weeks in between there. And during said six weeks, you're still applying to uh, other places and stuff like that. At which point, you might actually uh, get approved for like multiple places at once. Like you get approved for one of the like 20 places that you applied to. And then, so you move in and then say one week after you move in, uh, the place that you really want to move to calls you and is like, Hey, we got this opening starting on like April 1st or whatever. And then it's like, all right, awesome. Then you go up to your current landlord. At least this is what I do. I haven't been in this situation myself. And go, well, hey, uh, so uh, I got in with the place that I really, really want to move to. I'm sorry about the inconvenience. Uh, would it be at all possible for me to get my damage deposit back? We can go over the place and everything. I haven't even moved in yet. And, uh, yeah, sorry about kind of taking it off the market. Uh, hopefully you can contact your, the other, I probably wouldn't go into that much detail. I'd end up boring them. Unless they're chill, then I'd chat with them for a while. See if you can uh, contact the other rental people that tried to rent this place. You know, get number two type of thing. And then I'd go and hope it over to my better place. <laughs> I'd love to live in a place where I can have a pet cat. I suppose it's unfortunate that it helps me save money to uh, not have a pet cat, but I'd love to have an animal here to love. And I recently saw a few pictures of ferrets online, and oh my goodness, those are just so unbelievably cute and adorable. And... Like, I've always been kind of scared of ferrets before because they're kind of snappy and angry. But that's just because they don't know you. But, uh, you know, if it knows you and, you know, sees you as its mother or whatever, then it's like, oh, you love me and stuff. And you're all scrambling over me and, like, licking me and stuff and things like that. And so I'm thinking of getting a pet ferret because this place doesn't allow pets. But, uh, you know, that might be a small enough one that I can get away with. Like, okay, you have to stay in a cage for the day or something like that. And... I guess it would either have to be like a strong nylon cage, I think they can chew through damn near anything. But something where they can't like, you know, rattle it and make noise and alert people that I have an animal here. Like, oh, I wish I could have pets. A ferret I'd have to like get from, say, Petland, or ideally I'd love to get it from a uh, ferret breeder in Winnipeg. You know, I've heard a lot of bad things about pets from Petland, I'm not entirely sure why. Have I ever gone to Pet from Petland? I don't think so. I got one from Darcy's Ark once. Uh, one was a farm cat. Uh, the other one was a wild cat. <laughs> okay, so I've had a wild cat, farm cat, and a uh, purchased cat. <laughs> Can't remember if we actually had to pay for our second cat there, Whiskey. I know Sugar, that was the uh, litter of a wild cat, or a feral cat. You know, just kind of came to live in our garage, and it was all kind and stuff. Like, feral just means it's uh, not domesticated or whatever, but it was still, like, purring up against us and stuff. 
Maybe it was someone's, who knows. In either case, it had uh, kittens inside of that tire outside the garage, or outside of the uh, mechanic shop there. And then one day it dragged it into the garage, just, you know, because it's going to be all rainy and stuff there. And uh, put it inside of a trunk in the chest. Goodness, that cat must have, we called it Puss. Uh, she must have uh, been searching, like, all of the garages and everything in, you know, the neighborhood there. Like, six houses. <laughs> But uh, checking, the, looking everywhere to try and find, like, you know, the best possible place to uh, put the kittens, to raise the cats. And uh, so it found this uh, chest that was up inside of the rafters of our garage. So uh, we discovered that uh, either we saw the cat crawling up there or heard meowing. I can't recall which. I think it was meowing. Then we told Dad, and Dad went and verified, and it was like, okay, yeah, there's a cat with kittens in there. Let it do, let it do its thing. <laughs> and... Um, Oh no, wait, I'm not missing anything. And so yeah, the cat had kittens in there. Uh, there was five kids and five kittens. So each got a kitten, which was awesome. And also this ring. I don't think this ring over here is on properly. And mine was named Sugar. brother's cat was named Poochie. His second cat was named Poochie actually too. Kind of awesome like Poochie, a dog name for a cat. The first name we kind of suggested to him because you know he couldn't quite uh, speak yet. Or like you know he was three or something like that. And uh, mine was Sugar like uh, my grandma Sarah thought or was saying that uh, Sugar like brown sugar and I was like yeah but in my mind it, it didn't mean that it meant like just sugar. White sugar. <laughs> I don't know, the color didn't really make a difference to me then. And uh, yeah, that cat ended up being renamed to Ginger and moved up north to, uh, like my grandma had a place up uh, in the forest and my aunt lived beside her, Auntie Anne. And so uh, Sugar went to Auntie Anne and became Ginger. So I got to see her every so often, him. I got to see him every so often and that was awesome. Woo! You have a dragon caterpillar. Yeah, I know. You're half twin. Your brother? Brother, sister? These are going to be both boys. She's already uh, picked out the name and everything the uh, friend this is for. So, yeah, this is a boy girl and this is a boy boy. I can see a lot more two headed dragons in the future. Like, there's one that's going to have a silver head and a black head, and on the body, it's going to be half silver and half black. Like, that's Siamese dragon or something like that and uh oh goodness i want to make a three-headed dragon i was contemplating that would be uh one of my personal dragons it's probably just going to be a cnc here and the three-headed dragon is going to be for sale or up for adoption i don't like saying for sale it sounds so dirty <laughs> they're getting them adopted oh milk milk I love to drink out the milk. It helps me sing its milk. It moistens the throat and doesn't clog. Milk is better than water here. Anything with milk is clear. To make a good song go, it's a song about some wonderful things here. <laughs> Ooh, we need Albert. Oh, nope, that is Charlotte. That's Bitey. Oh, Hazel. Shade, Sissy, Charlotte again, uh, Gloria, there you are, Albert, there should be another one. Wait, you're Albert, sorry, I picked up Jill. You know what, Jill, you wanted to run with this? Yeah, it's kind of pondering you anyway, let's get Jill out. Wait, are you Jill? Are you sure you're Jill? This is Albert, shoot, okay, orange is Albert. Why are you on this type of key ring? I could have sworn that I had you on the other type of key ring. <laughs> well, I ordered... Oh, I haven't ordered it uh, just yet. I have another chain mail order. Goodness, the camera is blurry. What in heaven's name are you focusing on? Alright. Well, that's about as good as it's going to get. <laughs> Seriously, I need a new laptop with a better camera. I've tried to find one, but most of them are like 0.6 megapixel, and that's... Uh... <laughs> 
So one of my uh, big purchases of the near future is going to be a better computer. I used to have a better computer, then the losses of my life happened. So I picked up this one at a pawn shop for 300 bucks or something like that. Why did I take the body piece? I want the tail. Nope, not the leg. The upper, oh goodness, get back here, you. The upper tail. Ooh, to order more of these uh, titanium rings, they're, uh, I want to say 12 gauge, probably three quarter inch titanium rings. Do I even have any left? Goodness. I'll probably do inside of one of these piles here. Oh, that scales. Yeah, they're hiding down here. I have four of those left, and they come in a really, really, really handy for attaching sample pieces to in some manner or another. Like with dragons, they've come in handy. <laughs> so I think I'm going to order more of those. Titanium just because. Like they're light and stuff and really, really strong. And you got the prestige of St. Titanium. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the cross. Mm, love you, God. Should be looking up, but he's in the bottom left. It's kind of... <laughs> That's that's a pool up there. Let me go on. Okay, I've got to look to the upper right. He used to be up there. That's kind of where my main is usually, like the uh, deity that I speak with the most. Uh, it doesn't so much apply right now or anymore. I've kind of evolved since then in a manner. And uh, now it's just kind of whoever's talking to me the most, I talk to them the most. Which lately is a pool. I should make another uh, tetra orb. I don't really have any on stock anymore. Kind of, they're hidden inside of my purse. The three that I have left, I like to give those away. Wupu nesei suga mayaki vawa wupti so warni wada. That song is called the pool nesei. Hmm. Should we name it the full name? Oh, she wants me to say it. The pool nesei suga mayaki vawa wupti so warni wada. And it's kind of hard to put that at the front of a sentence. I'm sorry, I kind of interrupted you. So you don't load from now on. Okay, pool. Thank you. Come on, Troy. Hey there. <laughs> awesome. The pool says hi. <laughs> <laughs> until we get to the head of the dragon, every single quarter inch ring ends up being pre-opened. Generally speaking, for uh, most of the non-toothed dragons, every single quarter inch ring is pre-opened because the head uses 732. <laughs> oh, I wish they had black in 732 inch. Goodness. <laughs> I've asked them about it, actually. I've emailed them. Can I make a special order of this? And they're like, okay, um, sorry, you're going to have to make like a $2,000 order essentially for us to make a special shipment of like this gross amount of the rings to the uh, blackening place. And yeah, I'll end up sending it back like two grand and it's like, that's honestly pretty freaking tempting. Cause then I could make dragons for like, what years, a decade, decades? I essentially never run out of 732 blackened. <laughs> but 2K, that's, that is a four digit number there. Like, oh, can't do a four digit number now. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future. Well, at that point in the future, will I even need that amount of rings? Sure I will. I'm gonna be chain mailing until I'm 130. Technology, yo. Yeah. <laughs> I'd become a cyborg. I'm sure God would be cool with that. Yeah, still winged to heaven, still got a soul. Just got like metal arms and legs now. 
I wonder if I can do some of her telomeres. That's the like uh, sections of your uh, brain in some manner or another. I can't remember the specific terminology of where they fit into the brain cells. What are those called? Neurons. Or in what manner or another that is. Oh, hey, another pre closed. Oh, no, wait, you're not pre closed. Well, you are now. Anyway, as you, uh, you get older, your telomeres shrink and uh, you die because your telomeres run out. <laughs> Okay. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, let's put two silver rings in here. That way I can easily tell the difference between the black and, like, sample piece. I can tell the difference between Jill and the tail. And I only need two of them for that. Conversation between a pool and uh, the divine feminine. Mm, I really love her. She teaches me a lot. Mother Earth, she makes me feel wonderful. She's she's a calming spirit. Mm, makes me hug trees, pick up trash. I bitch every so often, but I'm glad she does it. Thank you. Firefish, thank you. Thank you. Too high. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Practice. Don't say anything after, okay? This is training here. Thank you, Mother Earth. Generally speaking, I'm kind of, uh, would afraid be the right word? I'm uh, embarrassed to speak with my deities in public. So, you know, I'm glancing from the, say, upper left, bottom left, you know, in whatever direction. And it just looks odd. Like, you see someone walking down the street going like this. Like, a little strange, ain't it? <laughs> so that's what kind of throws me off in public. Like, I don't want to look weird. <laughs> You know, if people understood, then it'd be all fun and good. Oh, it's just that chick that's talk talking to deities and stuff. But they don't know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. big, big sign on my back. I speak with deities. My head is turned this side. I'm just talking with God. <laughs> Front and back thing. Oh, goodness, there's a few t-shirts that I want to get to. Like, you know, that fancy, expensive $30 t-shirt type things. Hmm. I might possibly go to the store Wild Planet when I'm back in the city. Just pondering the repurchasing of the, my uh, life type of phase here. I lost a few really nice black metal shirts and, uh, you know, I want to see if I can get them again. Lost my, uh, whatchamacallit, Mayhem Band shirt. That's a horrible shame. I got to see them in concert and I think I have a few tiny pins to show for it, if I have those. <sighs> Demon attacks, yo. Well, you lose and you learn. Still live, still live. Mm -hmm. Sorry for this kind of serious moment there. It was a pretty rough area of my life. Not in the pub because I, like, you know, was through a happiness or something. I had a better life for that. In other case, I'm here because shit. <laughs> uh, 
in desperation. Yeah, I'll see where the next few years takes me. Like seriously, the past two years? I can't even count the number of significant life events that have occurred in that time, just... Tons. Seems like every week something significant changed in my life, or was lost in my life, or was chosen in my life. Becoming a healthcare aide. Business thing. Bitcoin. Like... <sighs> oh well. I might bitch about that every so often. It's kind of a bit of a depression that I'm getting through is basically just accepting all of my past losses. But generally I do by more, more or less going, eh. But, you know, still it hurts. Like, you lost significant things. Things that can never be replaced. Family heirlooms, stuff like that. My grandma's cooking pot. I'm going to try and find a reasonable facsimile of it. Almost saw one once. Then my uh, mom talked me out of it because it wasn't the exact same and, you know, hoping to find that brand again. I can't even remember what the brand name was, but I know exactly what the material looks like. Makes it uh, basically impossible to find online. Hopefully it'll pop into mind sometime or I'll Google search like, you know, pots, cast iron, probably cast iron, cast iron pots of the like 1950s or something like that. Basically, see if I can find it. Stoneware for some reason. It kind of had a uh, light gray matte finish. Kind of black knobby knobs on top. Kind of almost has a brittle feel to it, that plastic. Maybe just a matte finish to it. Ridiculously strong, amazing. Uh, my mind had just more or less entirely given up for a few years there. Huh. It's a shame. Lost to a demon. Lost more or less all of my life. It's just stuff, eh? Lost most of my artwork, like the stuff that I made over the years. It's basically spent thousands of hours on uh, things and have nothing to show for it. It's life, eh? Yay, depressing part. I'm trying to leave the window open in the apartment every so often. I have a little pile of bird seed uh, sitting on the windowsill, hoping that at some point or another a bird comes and lands there and starts eating. I'll just kind of do that generally every day and just leave it on the windowsill. I uh, kind of put something in front of it when I close the window, because I don't want them like you know landing on their side just kind of staring mournfully at the food. I want it to be available to them. If they can see it, I want it to be available. So yeah, nothing's come and taken from it yet, but I figure, you know, open it up for enough days, they'll uh, trust it enough. Because, you know, entering someone's house, I imagine from a bird point of view, that's like, you know, ground zero bad thing. Like, it, humans, they are big giant creatures. They will hurt tiny little frail me. Like, you know, predator, prey instinct type of thing. But I figure if they kind of get to trust it enough, or just kind of, you know, come close and kind of have a look-see and stuff, then they'll eventually... Oh, right, we need to make a forked tail. Ooh, ooh, good thing I thought of that.
kind of thinking that if I disconnect the leaf from where it is right now and attach it to the uh, dragon caterpillar, then we'll be able to kind of uh, better compare the length of the tails between Charlemagne and Cleopatra and our new dragon here. And basically try and get the fork to be happening at approximately the same, you know, time between the two of them. I get the feeling I clipped some of these ones down to uh, 732 as well. We'll find out. I'm liking that, that idea though, God. Uh, normally with most dragons, I'll make the tail, uh, like, straight from the sample piece and... Oh, goodness, sorry, I'm sorry, there's a hair in my face. As I paw up my face for half an hour. Don't mind me! <laughs> Getting, like, chainmail dust all over my face. Like my blush. Oh, it probably does show dust. Oh, well! There goes a dragon. <laughs> Dragon, dragon chainmail, dragon, dragon chainmail, dragon, dragon chainmail, dragon, dragon chainmail, dragon, dragon, dragon. Dragon, dragon, where are you, Jill? Where did Jill go? I've got your tail here. Seriously, where, oh, where did you go, oh, Jill? Oh, where, oh, where are you? Jill? <laughs> okay, well, my piecemeal dragon seems to have uh, curled off for a while. Oh, goodness, Albert, you're nice. We should most certainly be with this. This tattooing knife. I need to get one for Jill still. I want to find like a really, really nice pocket knife like this. It's nice and small, kind of nice fat, uh, flat steel all around. A really small but wide blade. And uh, it just works really, really well. It's nice and sturdy, kind of, you know, you can press your thumb against the back of it really nicely. It's a really nice knife. I think I got it for like $2 sometime, like 20 years in the past. Oops. And you weren't even attached to Albert. Goodness, way to pay attention. Drop it off. Now, where, where did Jill go? Where? Oh, hey, there you are. I was uh, grabbing this dragon head inside of the pile without actually really thinking that it was going to be uh, Jill. And there you go. Where'd the tail go? There you are. <laughs> oh, goodness, don't I attach you to Albert now? You know, a lot of their pieces are 100% identical. It's uh, just the body and the head that's uh, different. That's the word. Okay. There we go. Dragon chain. Dragon. 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 Dragon chain. Dragon. 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 Oops. Careful. Okay, shoot, where am I going through here? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one. There we are. Mm-hmm. 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 One second, I'm going to try something. I realize that I have a lamp kind of more or less in front of me. Let's whoop. Try and turn that on and see if that kind of improves the everything here. Is that better lighting? Let's try it. That doesn't look like better lighting, to be honest. That looks awful. Let's turn that off. <laughs> Let's use my eyes. Oh, oh well. How are you doing over here, Pinky? I have a little stuffed uh, pinky hanging from the end of my table here. And I also have a heater under there, kind of 
pointing at my legs more or less. Ooh, this nice. And yeah, I didn't want it to be uh, melting pinky or whatever, but she's fine, so it's all good. And we have a tail attached here. So let's get to CNC and get you to slither on the side. And just stretch your tail out and stretch this tail out. Okay. I could count, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was the divine feminine's idea there. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, two more segments. Or rather, four of this be considered two, probably two. Elf weave. Oh, oh elf weave. Elf weave. Oh, oh, elf weave. Elf weave. Oh, oh, elf weave. Elf weave. Oh, oh, elf weave. Elf weave, oh, elf weave, elf weave, oh, elf weave, elf weave, oh, elf weave. Our throat is kind of dry right now. Mm Done. That sounds like my phone just died. That'd probably be because my phone was not plugged in and it was almost there. One second. I'm gonna wander off screen and find my phone right now. Where oh where oh where did you go? Oh why oh I wonder how. Let's go plug you in. Poor little phone up here. And we may as well top up our milk, it's clear. Cause it's really tasty. Do I have anything to put inside of the milk here? So it tastes really quick. Milk and sour cream. How do you think that'd taste? I don't know if I want to ruin my milk, but that sounds a little bit like hot chocolate and sour cream, eh? That didn't sound quite right. Bitey here. He's learning. He has to bite really, 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 really quick to make that sound. He'll get it. He'll get a close enough facsimile of it. Okay. segments are we at here? Let's go compare this out and check these dragons here. Ok, 
Okay, one more segment, which essentially sets the base of the split in the tail. So three more rings, and then we have to kind of start finagling around here. Oh my goodness, don't mind me, I'm just picturing uh, my friend uh, receiving this dragon when, did, uh, when it's done. Oh goodness, they're going to be so ecstatic. They've been waiting. There we go. I might rough this dragon up a little bit in general, kind of, you know, scrubbing around with soapy water and stuff. I'll take off a slight bit of the black, which is fine, but I want to lose, like, you know, it's kind of leaving a uh, dust on my fingers. I want to get rid of that before I send it off to its new owner. Now, what are you two the dragons of? And that is the Cavastion. Okay, CNC. Let's have a look-see at the underside of your tail. Same with you, new dragon. Can you staring at this for a few minutes? Hope you don't mind. I think I actually need one more segment. Yes, I do. Or half segment. You know, if you flip it over, one segment is identical to the next. So, would that take make two segments to make one segment? I guess so, because if you have to flip it over, it may be identical, but hmm, different segment. Or it's part of the same segment until it fully repeats, you know? Ooh, that ring can be straightened out a touch. You see, if I don't fix the ring by uh, kind of squeezing or pulling one side down and pushing one side up, otherwise I'll grab the side of the ring and just kind of squeeze it laterally and kind of the side that's kind of up a little bit, and just kind of squeeze it in and yeah, it fixes it. Mm-hmm. 
Oh goodness, you're pushing all of the smaller rings, the maybe 16 inch rings off to the side. Okay, let's just shove all those out of the way because I need you to stretch out. Goodness, I have limited space. I'm working on the cardboard here because I don't want to scratch the actual, goodness, finish there. So, oh, trying to escape again. Man, you are just like rambunctious. Can't wait to like jump off to your new place. Oh, you're excited to go to the new home. Okay, steady. Okay, so that is actually angled up, which is about what we want. Okay, I went uh, straight up 3 16ths, it looks like, for that. Did I clip any of you down to become 732? 3 16ths. 3 16ths. Did I do anything? Oh, we do have at least one 732 inch ring. Looks like two 732 inch rings. At least two, three, four. I want to say just four. And I think we have a few extra rings they were clipped down probably from the same project. Coincidentally, four of them, which is unbelievably... Okay, we technically have a... Anyways. Okay, so that works out. Now, can we duplicate this? Those three sixteenths, those look like three sixteenths. Trying to decide just where to start here. That one angles up. Okay, you. Okay. Two, three, sixteen inch rings. Just open up a pile of so Once we get the main tangle here. Oh, a little bit extra work. Maybe even 3 sixteenths. Yeah, it looks it. Or at least not off enough for it to kind of bug my eye. Probably just worked. Usually if a piece of wire is one millimeter shorter I can tell the difference. Sorry I'm hunching over for you here. Ugh. Ugh. I gotta do more yoga and stretching more. Kind of see that as coming uh, kind of down my future or in my future.
still kind of recovering from my demon attack and everything. I am uh, have a bit of a glass half empty kind of feel on life these days. And, you know, I'm just kind of waiting to push past that, so to speak. Yeah, I know, sad, depressing subject. Uh, live on, eh? Live and learn. Live and learn. Okay. Okay, so I'm seeing this. Because really, I did muck around with this in trial and error for a while. Okay, am I getting these two identical? Under there. Through there, I think so. Now is when things get tricky. As you reach the quiet, serious minute of the dragon. Ooh. Oh, the microphone is picking this up. I am being a little bit quiet here. Okay, we're still going. How long are we at right now as I lean in? Hour and a half. I think we can go for about another two hours-ish. Two hours? Two hours. A little bit long. That'll take me a few days to upload. Basically, it's going to take me six days to upload this dragon. <laughs> oh, internet. And I used to have dial-up. Well, I'm still complaining. <laughs> Something isn't right. I'm not grabbing something the same way. Okay, am I coming through here? Yes, I am. Okay, and I'm going through here. Okay, that's where my mistake was. Two small rings there. And those three sixteenths are going to be there, but we'll attach those later. <sighs> Do I want to start two strands of elf weave with the sample? Or do I basically want to try and copy it ring for ring? So it would also be really, really freaking convenient if that worked. So it's a full size ring, resist 316s. I think that's 316s. I'm not replacing this one with 316s. <laughs> I may quickly devolve down to muck with it. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's that one. there. This is going to take me too long. I get the feeling I'm just going to make two tips of the tail and uh, wing it. Oh. Where'd you go, Jill? Jill! Hmm. 
Chill. Okay, you'll be. Here's a sample tip of the tail, which is more or less what we'd go to do. And why do you have two midsections of tail here? You have one of Albert's pieces. I did put a piece of Albert onto her. Albert, where are you? Sorry. Hope I didn't switch them. They have a lot of parts are identical. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna try just three sixteenths and get all the way here. I'm gonna need a lot more open rings. Okay, quarter inch rings. You actually get off of the playing field for now. Because I don't feel like being confused. Also, I'm getting a bit tired, so I don't want to be confused. <laughs> As I glug that down loudly. What I should use both Albert and Jill for this, both of the tail pieces there. Gonna borrow this again. <laughs> I'll give it back. Jill, where are ya? You're getting two tail pieces. Or mid tail pieces. Upper tail, two upper tail pieces. I'm going to take them both off the sample piece or not. Yeah, I'm pulling this A was deciding on, uh, you know, put them both on there. Kind of feels more special, like Jill's kind of claiming the tail there. You know, they share parts. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I got amazing shots for them. Uh, go to uh, Zebeth. Oh, I wish I could say Zebeth.com. I gotta get, go to click into that. It might be Zebeth.ca in the future. We'll see about that. Uh, go to Zebeth.shinesparkers.net. And into the dragon section there, just click on dragons at the top. And, uh, oh, hey, there's a thing to write down. Um, uh, dragons at the top. Then go to the, uh, I want to say it's the middle page. It might be the very, very last page, uh, somewhere around dragon, you know, 50 or so. Either late 40s or early 50s, uh, you'll find the, um, uh, piecemeal dragons. And goodness, do they have really nice photos. Like, go check that out. Stuff to buy. Um, uh, right, domain names. <laughs> mm, more banana chip. <laughs> so wrong. You might hear me crunching chips alone later. came up with that tune. Mm, 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 mm. When something's really tasty. Like that's gotta be from something. Where was the first place that was heard? There's something for Reddit. Where would you put that music? There's gotta be an R where is this from? <laughs> I'm sure if I Google searched uh, tasty food sound, that would probably bring up something. Better like the sizzling of steak or something. I've never been much of a steak fan. Like, I can see the appeal of the uh, crackle of, like, you know, the fat burning in the steak sizzling and stuff on a barbecue. But it's not what I associate with good food. <laughs> was saying the ding of a microwave. Oh, yes, but oh, boiling water for me? Maybe that. 
more or less everything I do is boiled. I can fry vegetables. As long as I can see me becoming vegan in the future. The idea of, uh, you know, eating plants, but uh, not to the point of uh, where you're eating plants in such a way that it kills the plant. Like, that means potatoes are out, which really, really sucks, because they're unbelievably uh, high calorie, or, you know, for the amount of work put into it type of thing. One of the uh, densest calorie vegetables there is type of deal. I saw that on Extra, or extra History, they had a series on the uh, Irish potato famine, and yeah, it went into a lot of detail of the potato. <laughs> Oops, I don't need you just yet. I need you, Jill, with your two upper tails. Okay, let's get two silver rings on there to kind of start off the party. Oh goodness, I can't wait until I get a faster computer so I can do video editing as well. Right now if I edit a video, like say this one to like put an intro sound on it and an uh, outro sound. Um, uh, that would like take basically another day or two worth of just saving, like waiting for the computer to just save file. I suppose I could do a trial and error of it and just see, or see just how long it takes. But I get the uncanny feeling that it's going to be one of those. Okay, well it takes me two days to upload a video and I want to record like if I could, daily. <laughs> See, yeah, it makes it a touch difficult. Do I want to add another day of processing time? Like, never mind just opening the file. That's probably going to be like 10, 15 minutes right there. If I could find good video editing software, that's a big one right there. It used to be Windows Movie Maker, but then that turned to crap or something like that. Yeah, I need to find a good video editor again. It's like they upgraded it, but now it's just not as good. Uh, maybe I'll try Windows Movie Maker again and just kind of muck with it. Pretty sure it was Windows. I should get Linux again. <laughs> right after setting everything up and getting everything working in OBS software and XSplit and everything, I had switched to Linux. So yeah, we have me uh, having trying a uh, dual boot system in the future. I used to have that where I could choose whether to load up uh, Linux or Windows. And that was pretty sweet. Pretty swag. <laughs> oh, I can see that again. Or if I have a fast enough computer just to run a Windows on a virtual machine. That would be pretty nice. Okay, how many segments of uh, elf weave do I have before I go down to just double the chain? One full, full segment. I still have some green scales kicking around. Okay, I'm going to need two of you, not a third. Debatably a third. I've contemplated the idea of, uh, like, say on C and C here. You know, there's the kind of two scales sitting like that, but uh, having an extra one in between the two kind of forwards, I don't know, wouldn't look, really look good with that uh, first specifically. You'd have to extend the necks, but uh, you know, just a ponderance. Three headed dragon is definitely going to need something like that. I figured the uh, third head will kind of come out above the other two, so it'd be really, really head heavy, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, what am I looking at here? Come on. Side rings. Hmm. Looks like these two side rings there are the kind of pre-clipped 732 inch rings. Both of you? One's 732, one's 3 sixteenths. Okay, we're going to try this again here. Just do it slight, slight different. Where in the heaven's name is the seam of this ring? There you are, goodness. was kind of misaligned here. This is one of the pre-clipped 7 to 32 inch rings. So I just kind of had to stretch that into place. There we go. Okay, now after the two 7 32 inch rings, now we're bouncing into the 3 16 Come on. some pre-closed 3 16 inch rings as I itch on my chin, as I straighten my back a little bit. Ah, oh goodness, chain mail. Hunched over, staring at the rings. 
Maybe, or maybe I'll try live streaming from the ground again. Like I used to do it where I was uh, sitting on the ground on my floor mattress and just kind of uh, doing it from a seated position like that. I may go back to that. I may go back to that. I'm not entirely sure if that's better on the back. Seems like it might be. Ooh, now I know how hairdressers get like carpal tunnel syndrome or whatever it is that means they can't basically hold their arms up anymore. Constantly holding your arms at this kind of side it's just kind of like a constant buildup of lactic acid. So I gotta be careful about that and kind of consciously slam them down every so often. Flapping my wings. The bridge turned on. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, crank the back a little. Oh, apologies for the uh, inelegant look here. Up another kind of cool part of the life cycle of a dragon. The disappearance of the name tag. Because the name tags are made of waterproof paper. You know, they're still paper. So uh, when you rough up with your dragon and stuff, generally speaking, the uh, name tag kind of, you know, gets faded and uh, kind of crinkled and stuff. You know, it's sitting in your pocket and everything and you're going to have to the water or the, like, gravel or whatever. And, uh, yeah. So eventually the tag is going to fall off, but the uh, embroidery thread is still going to be there. So uh, provided you leave it there, all of the dragons will have a uh, red thread around the neck. I'm tempted to put a red thread around all of the necks of my dragons now too. I kind of, you know, cut them off at the start because you know, generally so I still have the name tag. That's the thing, I still have the name tag. So I think I'm going to start that with my dragons. I'll put all the name tags back on. Then just let them wrap up and fall off over time. Oh, Octavia, I know yours would have, like, fallen off, like, ages ago. Where are you, Octavia? Nope, Charlotte again. <laughs> Hazel. Hazel looks a lot like Octavia. Oh! 
Octavia! Oh. My first. Actually, the sixth dragon of uh, the dragons that I've made. And so the last two counts for Dragon Zero. She's a different sized dragon, though, so she kind of throws off my dragon count, so to speak, but it lets me tell, her, uh, tell a tale about her. Yeah, my very first dragon was made with 16 gauge steel and 3 8 inch rings for the most part. And she did have an interwoven four in one belly. It changed to uh, dragon back for a little while afterwards, then went back to interwoven because it just makes for a better sliding dragon. Okay, now we need a really tiny ring. And we do have a few clipped down 532 inch black and steel rings. Oh, nope, nope, you are one of the 732. It sounds like a type of a plane of some sort. A 732 bomber or something. Oh, hey! A rust scale! Ooh, this one's pretty well rusted, too. I gotta add that to a dragon sometime. Or maybe not. Maybe it'll be a tail scale. Okay. There you are. Okay, now I need two tiny green scales. Doop, 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 doop. Doop, doop, I may have dropped a scale. Doop, 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 doop. Hope it wasn't green. Hope it wasn't green, because I'm going to need me for green. Ooh, and the first scraping got me all of one. Not a good sign. I'm starting to run out of the popular colors. I have a whole lot of silver and a whole lot of red. Not many green. A fair amount of purple. I could have sworn I was low on purple. And this black one here has a hole that's punched really, really, really close to the edge, so I don't like that because that's really weak. We'll toss you out. Okay, three green and a silver and gold. I don't want the gold now. I'll save the gold for when the economy crashes. <laughs> or rather, stock market. I don't know if the economy crashes. Is that the same as the stock market crashing? I guess that's a matter of opinion more than anything. Is the stock market the economy? Do you consider it as such? Or would the stock market crash cause the economy to crash? Okay, we have very, very, very few uh, green tiny scales after this. Unless they're all buried at the bottom, which if I had to guess is no. We have... Oh. One, two, three, four here. Okay, so they were all buried at the bottom. <laughs> Still, I have a whole lot of silver. Black is a pretty awesome color, so I've got a pile of those. I have the head of a rivet here. What slot do you go into in the chainmail kit? Over there. That migrated over one. Yeah, we have a whole lot of silver, and it's pretty rare for me to use silver. And we dropped another small scale. Oh, failed you at least one of them, which was red. And purple tried to escape. And I have a few regular size scales here too, but kind of like mangled rings. And the thought that I will turn those into tiny rings if I need to, or want to. Because like say I have a, uh, like a light blue scale here which is, uh, you know, a specialty color, but the hole for it is punched really, 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 really close to the edge, so it's really, really weak on the edge there. Like, I can bend it by hand, like, quite easily. That's that's not a good thing. So we keep it kicking around for exactly that to turn into a uh, tail scale. I may one day or another just go through all of the big scales and turn them all into tail scales beforehand. It does make it easier to pick them out, though, and it is the specialty colors. Like, say, pink. Pink is not a color that's uh, commonly available. What is this titanium ring doing here? Okay, so we have four scales. Did I cup the two tips of my tails? I probably did. Yes, I did. Let's do the same for this one. Okay, after that long kind of treagle off there. We're in heaven's name to the uh, off-sized. 532 inch ring go. Can I go and put you back? No. I want to put you down somewhere silly. 
Okay, well now we play the game of just cut a ring and make us a two five thirty two inch rings. So I don't know where that off sized one went. You're pretty closed. About a millimeter and a half off. And about a millimeter and a half off. Yeah, that's another thing that really kind of this knuckle right here, whenever I squeeze this and it pops like that, it kind of puts a lot of stress on this knuckle for whatever reason. So I don't really like clipping a whole lot of rings if I can avoid it. So we may end up with the case of uh, more or less all future black dragons having teeth. Just, I don't want to clip a hundred rings. <laughs> or rather 58, I think there's 58 rings in a head. Which means that for this black dragon, uh, Cleopatra, I did indeed clip down 58 rings for that. And I did for another one vaguely recently as well. Can't recall the name of that one straight offhand. Erica? Was that Erica, maybe? Erica was a black dragon. Um, uh... Oh, what was the name of her dragon? Tamara! I think it was Tamara, actually. I'm pretty sure it certainly was Tamara. Can't recall about Erica. Double-check her photo. Although from kind of the more or less top view, it is really hard to tell if it's a toothed dragon or not. Kind of one of those you gotta look up close things. Oh, I sang that song at the start, but let's pick a different one. extended version of Oh Darling. Hope you liked it. kind of a vague modification of Norfair, kind of making it extra, you know, more gentle, instead of the uh, strict, harsh, mm -hmm. which I gotta say, it really does a number on the throat. I cannot perform that song, like, more than, like, once or twice for, like, a good period of time. Gotta let the old vocal cords relax after that one. Mm -hmm.
songs for uh, Tetris and uh, what should we call it there? Norfair? I don't think those have actually been added to my, uh, what should I call it, discography on YouTube. I'm going to make a note to double check that and add them in if they're not there. Also a few others. Video game themes. Video games really are my kind of, uh, you know, the thing that I played the most growing up. So they're the songs that are stuck in my head the most. So I've got to practice those more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the tails, the tips of the tails, tip of the tail, the teeth, lips, the tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips. <laughs> and then we combine the tails. It's kind of like tails from Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic and Tails, Sonic and Knuckles. Was Tails in Sonic and Knuckles? He better have been. He was awesome. So a hilarious comic strip about, uh, you know, Sonic and Tails, and basically Tails just telling Sonic, I have two tails so I can fly by spinning my tails around really fast and stuff. So I can get you over this cliff. And Sonic is like, eh, that looks pretty shady, but we'll try anyway. Because Tails was all bragging about it and stuff. So the second he jumps off the uh, cliff, uh, Tails' is tails like, you know, do exactly as you, th you think they would. Just <laughs> and then it cracks and pops and they fall to their doom. <laughs> Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> I have a bit of a dark sense of humor hiding in the back there. Okay, we're done the elf weave portion. And now we can bounce straight on over to the double the chain, king chain. As we reach the uh, quieter part of our journey here. Okay. One more pre closed ring, which we actually do not need. So we'll be opening you momentarily. Although, actually, I think. No, no, we're not quite done with three 16 inch rings after this. They are needed for the teeth of the dragon. Oh goodness, the heads are going to take a while because we got to make two of them. <laughs> okay, last ring of the tail. Then we attach the two tail scales. 
and Oh, so hey, a uh, kind of cool thing that happened uh, the other day. I found a 20 on the ground. Woo! It's kind of debating whether I should mention that or not. Like, it was a lucky streak. Will I lose my lucky streak if I mention it, or will it make it better? <laughs> so I'm trying the latter. See what that does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have, I have crap luck tomorrow, then I'm going to be keeping it to myself from now on. <laughs> okay, there we go. We have two dragon tails. And this scale should be open. We'll see a little bit, a little bit showing up. That shouldn't be too bad, honestly. Significant number of them will be showing up in the near future. Okay, so now I'm detaching the uh, tails from the sample pieces here. Try attaching them to the main dragon tail. And after, oh come on, bleary eyes, two hours and change, we may have gotten a dragon to the point of tail, which we're hoping to accomplish today at least. Goodness, I must have fought with this for ages with CNC. Okay, so let's just put you like this. Just balance you gently. Okay, let's remove the other tip of the tail. Tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips. Oh goodness! Go out away from me. Okay, two identical tails. Good, good. At least I think they're identical. One was stretching up longer than the other for some reason, and I don't like that. What's going on here? Something is slightly wrong. You have four doubled uh, ring segments. You're only supposed to have three doubled ring segments. So, we fix that mistake by going like so. You go ahead. Why the rings look like a cross. <laughs> and where the, okay, there you are. Like so. Attach you onto there. And we kind of straighten this ring out a little bit because you're still just slightly warped. Close. Better. And then we've got this extra ring over here. A shaggy male tail. A shaggy weave tail. Ooh, ooh. A shaggy dragon. Ooh, ooh where's my dragon book? Where is my dragon book? Let's write that one down. A shaggy dragon. Come on, you.
Okay, we're gonna write it in black ink. Kapoor wants it to stick out. Okay. Yeah, I'd kind of encourage you all to uh, worship the uh, pool in the say, eh? Just try, like, uh, you know, on the off side. Like, pretend like there's a turtle beside you named a pool in the say, and you're just like, Hey, a pool, how are you doing today? Chilling over there? Sitting on a rock? Much up to. You know, try and ask her uh, what her day is. And see what happens. She's looking for more worshippers. You know, I guess that'd be kind of like a bit of a uh, challenge when you're a spirit, like... You know, you become a spirit uh, because, uh, or not because of, but like people uh, worship you or talk to you spiritually, essentially, is what I mean when I say worship. I mean talk to you spiritually. So, uh, very, like, how do you find more people to do that? Ooh, I need something else to drink here. Two seconds. I'm gonna get me something with caffeine this time. Root beer, love oh, root beer. I need you to stay awake. Root beer, oh for root beer. I need you to stay awake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is kind of stuck shut? Root beer, love a root beer. And I uh, pretty flattened the uh, soda as well. I've never been a fan of carbonation. I have problems with burping. Like, as in I can't. <laughs> So what I do then is I basically leave the soda open or shake it repeatedly over and over again and open it up again. Basically flatten the soda. Like seriously, how do people like carbonation, honestly? Okay, so Jill, you can go back there. And CNC, you kind of sit around that general vicinity. Let's kind of keep your tail visible if you can, please. And now, D&D. &D. You've got to compare. Okay, what am I looking at now? I'm looking at the bottom. Okay, back to the top. Are you duplicated or are you single? You're single. So, do those rings go through? Hmm. Should be a ring coming up like that. I don't think I like uh, some rings that I put in here. Not, not quite the right way there. Nope, oh, undoing those. It did look like it was possibly easier from the underside. Thank you, Divine.
Okay. Okay, how are we going to do this? I get that feeling that I'm just going to wing it and hope that it turns out well. <laughs> okay, so we have a silver ring here. It's decent sized. Oh goodness, that's tasty. Okay. If we were to flip you upside down, would that help me? I get the feeling we're going to need another few uh, 732 inch rings. Okay. This one's supposed to be angled up. one right there ends up being a 3 16 inch ring. Yup! Winging it! Okay, so I have these two side rings. So, which way do I want them? Up right that way or down right that way? What do we have here? Looks like in the first connection down right. So we're going to do that as our first step. Then we'll kind of lock these rings in a little bit tighter. Who knows, I may even find a better way of doing the tail, which would be awesome. Don't worry, I'm not going to redo you CNC. We improve with every take, don't we? Okay, this ring here may well end up being replaced with a 3 16 inch ring. Suppose I could do that now. Yeah, let's do that now, Divine. Sorry, God. Divine's kind of claiming, uh, whatchamacallit, that she's giving me ideas. I think she's testing us or something right now. Not entirely sure what's up with that one. I'll call it out if I hear it, okay? What is going on here and why are you fighting? There we go. Okay. Now this inner ring here, this one might be swapped out for 3 16ths as well because it is on the uh, CNC. Thank goodness I've got uh, promo shots already for my other three dragons. Since those have already been given to uh, the care home where I work at, St. Paul's. It's for the evening tomorrow. That will be decent. Okay. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. Which way do these rings go? Let's, let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's be, let's, let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. But that what I need is to put this 316 back inside of the tail here and remove it after attaching. Is this the right way? Goodness, what do you say? Looks like it is, but this slipped out and now we're back. It's all good. I'm supposed to message someone from work some information about the bus trip to the city. I should get on that dead sometime soon. Just after I remember that just now. Let's kind of put a reminder of that somewhere in over here. There we go. I have the last bite of my food over there too in a few minutes. Okay, steady. You sit exactly like, nope, not like that, like that. Okay. Okay, there we are. Why am I still holding a pen in my hand? <laughs> okay, look, 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 look. Looking good, looking symmetrical. Woo! Preliminary attachment done. go. Shit, I am tempted to leave it exactly like this. Holy goodness. This just simplified the weave like a thousand times over. Wow. Let's, let's have a closer look at this here. I might bring this close up to the camera to show you the difference. Because this is so much cleaner. Hmm. Really... Is there any problems with this connection method? Cause goodness, wow, heavens. This one ring here is slightly jaggedy. Let me fix that. Oh, and this is going to a blind woman. She's going to be like feeling every single jaggedy on it. Which is kind of another reason to get the saw cut rings. If you have a better seam, then you'll feel the uh, edge a bit less. But at the same time with saw cut, if it's even slightly off, then you're going to feel it being really, really, really sharp. As opposed to, you know, kind of, eh, mostly dull. 
The black ring's a sud. I swear it sharpens the edges, too. There we go. Well, I'm wondering whether to keep this here. New version or old version. Now you've got a bulky uh, tip of the tail by comparison there. That's all right, that's all right, you're the trial. Yeah, let me show you up close. So here's uh, Charlemagne and Cleopatra. Kind of, you know, generally thick, dense clump of rings. And here is New Dragon. That's the new one. You can see it being just a lot less clumpy there. So yeah, that one for the win. <laughs> So we're going to be taking a picture of that later, possibly right now, to put on the website for later as a kind of, uh, I have a section on my website, Zebeth, there for, you know, the unique parts of dragons, like exactly how I did exactly this part. So I'm going to grab my phone, which needs to turn on, because if you recall, it turned off a little while ago, because the poor little thing's battery went and died. So whilst you're loading up, I am going to find this scritchy ring that I caught a second ago and fix you. Da -da -da -da. LG. Then I'll be getting another LG phone. This was another pawn shop find. Just a I need something. Should have tested the microphone. It leaves a clicking sound in the background. Unfortunate. Could have taken it back. Should have taken it back in retrospect. For some reason didn't at the time. I hate returning things to be honest. I should. Never liked returning things. One of those types of like, I'll suck up the loss rather than go back. Because it's a hassle to go back. And it type of thing. <laughs> Apologies for the expletive. And horse feathers type of thing. And also my phone just gave me several notification sounds, none of which will be looked at until I am done for the night. And now we're gonna take a picture of a split frame and dragon tail. And now we're gonna take a picture I have a split ring, dragon tail. Not split ring, dragon tail. A split tail, split dragon tail. Okay. One more. Okay, and one from the other side. Don't mind me taking photos while taking video. Like this is a tutorial type of thing. If anyone wants to make these dragons, I'm uh, giving them instructions on how to. This is how you make the symmetrical tail split. And wow, this... This iteration turned out really nice. I have got to say. One more. Just so I can pick the least blurry. Kind of a cool shot. You see that? Let me try and get a good angle. Angle! Backlit screens. There you go. Kind of cool. <laughs> okay, cool. So we have instructions on that. You know, while I'm here, let's take a photo of the uh, two head connection here. It's actually not going to work. Maybe later on uh, CNC. 
Just because I don't want to like mix up all of the photos here. We've got a uh, double same headed dragon versus a uh, double different headed dragon. Mm. Mm. Apologies. My bra strap fell down and it is quite annoying. <laughs> Women problems. Okay, so we've got a split tail, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. I want to fix this one ring as well, because it's standing out to me and irritating me mildly. Okay. Could be asking for problems here. I want to try and file this ring down. I know I'm asking for problems here. <laughs> Just so that it kind of connects better when it's closed has a better seam. So not much needed, I don't think. Just enough to get the two ends to back together better. There we go. That's a bit better. It's smooth now anyway. Okay. Ooh. What are we sitting at? 2.40 for a time. Let's get started on the head here, shall we? Okay, so three 16 inch rings. Generally speaking, I only need a handful of you. We'll keep you off to the side in case we... Holy goodness, I have a whole ton of you sitting out, don't I? Okay, we don't need nearly this many because we're done with the tail. Let's just put you all back. Oh, as I down that root beer. Okay. We need quarter inch rings again. Quarter inch ring, quarter inch ring. Gonna get us some quarter inch ring. What we need is quarter inch ring. A whole big pile of quarter inch ring. 106 quarter inch rings. Right. 116 quarter inch rings. A whole big pile of quarter inch rings. Quarter inch rings, oh quarter inch rings, oh we need a ton of quarter inch rings. Seriously, we have to make uh, four sections of European four and one weave, connect them together with quarter inch rings, then we add these side uh, three sixteenths inch rings, and that gives it its teeth. Okay, here's a whole big pile of quarter inch rings. <laughs> Okay, we're going to need eight, sixteen, twenty-eight, 
24, 32 open rings, and 64, and wait, wait, 7, 14, here, let's get these first here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, let's get these, 13, 14, 15, 16, no, double it. Pre-opened rings here. Hey, right, save me a few seconds. I look that I completely mixed the piles together and lost my count. <laughs> okay, let's grab these pre-opened rings here. Can I shake you out of the pile? This takes slightly longer kind of uh, poking at the pile of unopened rings just to find the opened ones that kind of filtered through into the middle of it somewhere. But, you know, I like to have all my open rings out ahead of time to see how many I need to open. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Cool. So, now we need a whole pile of clothes. Hey, a pre-closed ring. <laughs> the slight jaggedy. Let's smooth you out. Oh, just the slightest. She did she say that she's going to wear it, so I do want to get rid of those as much as possible. Okay, now we need 7, 14, 28 closed rings. Wait, 28. So 56 closed rings. Mm-hmm. 
I just had an unpleasant thought. I may have to upload this as two videos, and you may not have uh, audio for the entire first part of it. I apologize. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 